My favorite TV series character, Samantha Jones from Sex and the City series, once said, I, be I don't believe in the Republican Party or Democratic Party. I just believe in parties. I quite don't agree with that. I believe in both responsible green politics as well as some fun. My name is Michał Suhora and I would like to welcome you at the European Green Party New Year's party. Last year, 2020, brought a lot of changes in our lives. We don't travel as much as we used to. We have to protect ourselves as well as the one we love with masks, uh, gloves and uh, hand sanitizers. We also spend much more time in the virtual reality, just like now. This famous party rule, bring your own battles, has never been more appropriate than now. Due to the pandemic and lockdown, we cannot meet physically, but I promise you to make all I can to make this party as joyful as possible. This party would never come true without your generosity. Over 17 donors from all around Europe donated 1,200 euros to make this event come true. Uh, this money was donated to the Green Family Fund. It's a, a virtual donation box dedicated to support green initi initiatives. If you still haven't, please consider a donation, regardless the amount. The link to this uh, virtual donation box can be found in the in the um, invitation to this event. This New Year reception is dedicated to culture. The culture sector, sector has been largely hit by the pandemic of coronavirus. Uh, and we, the Greens, have solutions how to support it. Tonight, we will watch together performances by two Polish artists. Please consider it as a gift of hope in this hard time. But before that, please welcome two special guests, co-chairs of the European Green Party, Evelyn Heutebrück and Thomas Weiz. Green friends. So 2020 showed us a world we don't want to live in. We saw a reduction of freedom, Health services are under great strain. The youth with fewer and fewer prospects, the elderly more and more isolated. This is not the world that we Greens we want, neither for ourselves, not for our children. And there is an urgent need to move towards a more ecological and democratic society based on solidarity. The health crisis that we are experiencing proves even more that we have no time to lose. But let's be optimistic. More and more actors from politics, businesses, civil society are looking at the future differently and want to build a new model of society on a more sustainable basis. If more than 10 years ecologists have been talking about the Green Deal, today they are no longer alone. Indeed, in 2021, Europe, pushed by the health crisis, is finally putting a European Green Deal on the table to get out of the environmental, economic and social crisis. Finally, Europe has prepared a major public investment plan oriented towards a just and sustainable transition. And environmentalists will monitor very closely its implementation. No dispersion of funds, no waste of money on fancy projects done just for the prestige, no greenwashing. Concrete action is needed for citizens. Insulating houses, improving soft mobility, better support and equipment for schools. National investments must complement this recovery plan, and in the six governments in which we have Green Minister, we will keep watch. 2020 is a year filled with major events. 
Starting from the Climate COP in Glasgow in autumn, which we are actively preparing with a major climate campaign with your collaboration, from the European to the local level, with the Big Green family, the group of course, the FIEC, the GEF, the Global Green, but it will also be the World Summit for Biodiversity, which will have to set a clear, ambitious course. Fight against deforestation, protection of living species, transition to agroecology, reduction of ocean pollution. The crisis has also deepened inequalities and widened the gap between the richest and the poorest. For us, the transition can only be just and sustainable. Some sectors in particular will need support. The self-employed, hotels, restaurants, cafes, but also agriculture, where today we give more emphasis to some cultivations over others. And of course, the cultural sector, which is going through great hardships during the pandemic and to which we dedicate or even tonight. There are a lot of challenges ahead, but the energy of our elected representatives, members and supporters is renewable and never ending. It is also with the civil society that we want to build a better and more joyful tomorrow. Thank you for your work, your actions, your projects. I hope to see you all again in 2021 and not just behind the screen. Stay safe. Stay healthy, stay hopeful. And now, a word from my co-chair, Thomas Waits. Thank you, Evelyn, and a warm welcome also from my side to all the green-minded, to all the socially concerned, to all the ones that care for their surrounding, that care for their fellow citizens, for nature, all the ones that see social justice as a core part of our society. Some of you may be affiliated to Greens or Green parties. Some of you may have joined us from civil society organizations or other political background. Let me all welcome you to this unusual event. And an unusual event it is in unusual times. Uh, and are we not all missing the physical meetings, uh, the going out together, meeting people? We all are, you know, the socializing moments, uh, the randomly new met people that you can meet when you go out. We all miss it very much. Still, many of us can substitute. Well, we listen to music out of the can. Uh, we have some TV on demand. Uh, we read some good books. But what about all the artists, the creatives, especially the ones that do not have the luxury of, uh, you know, fixed paid jobs? What about these people? What about the not so famous musicians which are now struggling with their daily lives? Many of our fellow citizens are in deep trouble. Uh, almost one year already heavy restrictions and a total lockdown. In many cases, especially artists, don't have any more financial resources uh, and very often are overlooked in our society. They're declared non-essential. I don't share this assessment. I think culture is key for our society. Culture is essential for our society. We need the artists to talk about the taboos, to, talk, to create crazy ideas how to solve uh, the problems that we all face. I think culture is essential. And we owe the artists, we owe them to finally introduce proper social security. We owe them to finally introduce a minimum pay. Well, today, I would say, let's support our fellow colleagues. Let's support the cultural sector as much as we can by buying records, by buying songs, by joining online performances, or by donating to the free theaters next door that we used to like so much. And, you know, help them financially to survive as the duty of our days. But it's not only about the artists to survive, it's about us, our society, about the culture that we all need in our daily lives. It's about making sure that artists are still there when we finally get through the crisis. So without longer ado, let's come to the room, what we have met for, 
and I hand over to Poland, to the moderator in Poland, to introduce the cultural activities and contributions for this evening. Welcome to the New Year's reception. Welcome all of you. We're glad that you're with us. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Thomas. Introducing myself, I forgot to mention that I am a proud member of Partia Zieloni, so the Polish Greens. So now to prove you my Polish linguistic skills, I'll ask a few questions to a famous Polish performer, musician, Jacek Budyń-Szymkiewicz. Cześć, Jacek. Bardzo miło, że jesteś. Hi, tak, Jacek, patrzyłem. Cześć. Powiedz mi, dzisiaj wieczorem rozmawiamy. Well, what I've been missing the most are three things, sense of humor, common sense, and work, work that one can be paid for. I mean, these are the fundamental things that are still missing, especially in our country. Horrible things happen in the area of sense of humor, common sense, and in certain industries like mine. We have absolutely no opportunity to work and no support whatsoever. Well, I just wanted to ask you, well, before we allow you to enter the stage, would you please say how the Polish state has played its role during that hard times? How the state helped the artists and how would you imagine the ideally designed, fair and efficient um, support of the state? Because, you know, coronavirus pandemic can happen in future many times again. Well, I can't speak for everyone because I think that I think that there's a part of, you know, there are certain people in our industry that managed to get some support, but me and many, many other artists were just not supported at all uh, because the support was, well, you know, it was designed in such a way that you had to meet certain criteria. I couldn't meet them at all. And the very many of my friends couldn't meet them either. And it was true about the first and second so-called support shield. And during the first and second lockdown, I talked to my friend from Dublin. And, you know, we talked about Poland and I listened to his stories um, and how the Irish people manage. Well, I'm crying, missing the solutions that have been offered there to artists. And, you know, there, artists are treated. Well, surely I thinking now about the support mechanisms. They are treated as a very important part of the society. And I've heard so many times about GDP generated by our industry. I don't want to talk about it now. But, you know, you cannot overestimate the thing that we work with sensitivity and because of us you are able to again enjoy sense of humor and common sense you know in a way that touches you in the heart and in such times well I wouldn't like to sound you know you know, to you know, pathetic I wouldn't like to sound like that but it seems to be you know we are missing art. We're just missing art. And I don't know about the percentage of the society struggling with depression. But I think that it must be quite a representative group. So anyway, with the state support or without uh, state support, very soon us doctors of hearts will have to be very much present in the life of the society. Well, I think there's nothing better to do now than to just give some shine shine to everyone.
The boys inside the beat say I know you tired but come, come This is the way now This is the way Sometimes I forget completely what companion sick, sick, sick is. Unconscious and insane, I spill sad energy everywhere. <laughs> My story get, 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 gets told in a far, 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 far way. A romance, the jerk, war, and vacancy, a romance, the war. War vacancy to fuck my forgetfulness to any number. It go 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 around these dark suggestions that I follow. Are they part of some plan? Friends, be 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 careful. Don't come come near me. Out of curiosity or sympathy. Out of curiosity or sympathy.
what, what, what you are Spirit to all, sex, sex, sex Well, anybody of this world they say There is a soul and you are that But we have ways within each other That will never be saved by anyone But we have ways within each other That can never be saved by anyone, anyone Jacek, thank you so much for your performance. Uh, I hope that next time you play for us, it's going to be live in a club or a concert hall. Now, please welcome our next guest, Benedict Linard, Vice President of the Government of the Wallonia Brussels Federation, Minister of Children, Wealth, Culture, Media and Women's Rights. Good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here with you on this special occasion. I hope we'll be able to meet in person one day, but after all, nothing can stop us getting together for the European Green Party's New Year reception. Firstly, I want to take this opportunity to wish you all the best for 2021. I hope in particular you will have occasions to laugh and celebrate together, to share cultural activities, going to a concert, to a theater or the cinema. We've all missed these occasions over the past month. The health crisis is a real catastrophe. The cultural sector and all the people who make a living from it have been hit especially hard. It will take months or even years for the cultural world to recover. As you are no doubt aware, this is the first time in Belgium that a minister for a Green Party has held the post of Minister of Culture in the Wallonia Brussels Federation. There are very few countries in Europe that can boast this. At the start of this legislature, we knew very well what issues we wanted to work on and our vision for the cultural policies we wanted to adopt as Greens. But then, COVID-19 gate crashed our lives. And our plans, that vision, have since proved to be the mainstays we rely on in the face of the pandemic and when we think of the future too. Access to culture for everyone from a very young age, support for diversity, particularly gender diversity, anchoring culture more firmly in the local context, and the essential role of culture as a vehicle for emancipation, education, and democracy. Access to culture is essential. Culture brings us together. Culture builds bridges. We need it individually and as a community. We need music, literature, and art, probably even more in periods of crisis. Although theaters, cinemas, and concert halls had to close their doors again in the autumn, we fought for greater access to culture. And we continue to do so today, while taking the reality of the epidemic into account. In Belgium, the libraries and the bookshops have stayed open. Cultural activities for children are still going on. Recordings of plays and concerts have been made available to the public, and the museums and art centers are currently open too. Since March, 
The cultural sector has been working to reinvent itself, to find ways of reaching its audiences by investing in the public domain, for example. Digital initiatives have multiplied often successfully. And although, like recordings, they will never replace live shows, they've opened up new possibilities and may enable culture to reach new audiences. In times of crisis, these initiatives are essential. They've given us breathing space and are vectors of cohesion. Culture is a precious resource for our well-being, but there are also significant economic issues at stake. In Belgium, around 200,000, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> 250,000, it's a lot more, people earn their living in the cultural sector, which is the sector that has been most severely hit by the health crisis. In the face of this emergency, the Wallonia-Brussels Federation has stepped up to the plate. Remember, in Belgium, the federal level is in charge of social welfare. The regions are responsible for economic aspects, and the Wallonia-Brussels Federation, along with Flanders and the German-speaking community, supports culture. Yes, I know, Belgium is complicated. So, within this context, I've been working to introduce important financial support measures besides maintaining all the grants and subsidies for everyone active in the cultural sector, cinema, literature, and so on. We also thought very early on about the, ne about the need to reorganize the cultural world after the crisis. With this in mind, I set up an interdisciplinary forum called A Future for Culture. Its purpose is to think about the reorganization of cultural policies in the Wallonia-Brussels Federation. The role of the artist and, above all, support for creative work are major considerations. We've also initiated meetings between the different entities that make up our country to hold crucial talks and organize complementary measures. Joining forces and working together are undeniably a green touch. Our work is far from done. We need to start thinking now about the post-COVID-19 world and how we want to shape it. A world with more solidarity, with a more resilient cultural scene, a more inclusive world, a world where those who work in the arts can earn a decent living. We also need to work to strengthen the cultural dimension of the European Union and beyond that, exchanges between our citizens. Culture is another way to make Europe more social, with more solidarity. The member states and the European institutions will work together to improve the working conditions of our artists. Discussions currently underway at UNESCO in the context of the Resiliart project will form the basis of the, this work. We need creative people to think about the major challenges that our society will have to face in the years to come, especially climate change, climate change and the transition to a society with more solidarity. Artists will help, help us to think, to dream and to build tomorrow's world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benedict. It's great to know that culture and arts are integral parts of the green agenda. And speaking of art, meet Toen, a choreographer and buto dancer who I, uh, who I interviewed just a few days ago. Good evening, Toen. Good evening, hello. Hey, such a pity you cannot join us here in the studio in Warsaw. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit complicated right now, but it's nice to see you and meet you. Anyway, welcome to the party. And before uh, watching your, uh, your art, I would like to ask you a few questions about uh, last year. Is it okay with you? Yeah. Perfect. So, Toen, you are a performer and the contact with, uh, with your public is an integral part of your artistic practice. 
can you please tell us uh, how do you cope both emotionally and technically with the lockdown? Uh, well, it, I must admit that it's kind of difficult not to say maybe even dramatic situation for me as being a, a dancer, basically. Uh, I think every dancer knows that uh, body is a tool in dance. So uh, I'm using a body in my dance to confront with public and uh, I need living body somehow to to create things and to uh, to dance and when i don't have this friction between uh, my body my dancing body and public uh, everything a little bit i don't want to say like dies because maybe it sounds too dramatic but like withers away that you lose this kind of uh, unique energy that you create between a body on stage and a body in audience or whatever you know context you may choose because it can be black box it can be gallery uh, it can be just uh, a yard a garden doesn't matter but i think somehow we i personally as i, I as a dancer i i lose a lot um having to confront the screen <laughs> Rather, rather than a human uh, human being, yeah, and it's it, I would say it's it's a bit sad and it's an extremely difficult situation for me. We were all not only dancers; we were all forced into changing a lot of things in our lives recently. We don't travel as much as we used to. Uh, we pass much more time in this virtual mm -hmm. reality. And do you, think, do you think that all those changes are for worse? Or maybe the pandemic is a good time to reflect on our Western lifestyle and introduce some of those changes permanently for the sake of the planet? Uh, well, um, I don't think I am empowered to know even these things. Um, one thing I'm sure, I can say what I'm sure, uh, about that we are going uh, we are going through some, some incredible extraordinary extraordinary transition i don't know either it's good or bad i don't know i have i don't i don't really know but i feel that this transition is happening in um, almost every field of our lives like uh, in uh, in our minds in our bodies and um, and that's it, yeah? And uh, for me as a dancer, uh, and the way I work, uh, it's about small steps and it's about making a small impulse. Uh, my aim is to, when I perform, when I, when I use you know, different channels of expression, is to make this small crack. And I hope that in this crack, uh, and maybe a thought will appear and maybe this thought will be a reflection. I hope it's not too complicated, but I believe that what I can do now is just somehow make people stop <laughs> and somehow, if possible, make them reflect uh, on themselves, on their bodies, especially such a, such a difficult times uh, when we are somehow uh, lacking the bond with the, lacking the bond with the environment, uh, with the society, with ourselves, and we are strengthening the bond with the screen, with the virtual reality. Somehow the the balance is totally disrupted. Uh, so I would love, and 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 uh, my wish is to 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 uh, to do something that people just will stop and look at themselves, like not on the screen and on the thumb, but uh, somehow to find the. A chance to reflect on the on the bodies and how they are to the society, to the environment, uh, to the ecosystem, to the society, politics, whatever. It's, it's such a such a such a crucial thing, I think. Perfect. Thank you. So, could you please tell us a few words about the piece you chose for tonight? Um, 
Tonight I chose a short video which is called uh, Black Landscapes. It's a very, very fresh, fresh work. Uh, it's an intimate video which is just, I would say just simply, it's, uh, it's my um, reflection uh, on relation between uh, humankind, nature and civilization. Um, it's 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 not a, it's nothing to be it's nothing to it, it doesn't have um, it doesn't have a kind of narrative plot or uh, or just uh, big thoughts behind it's just a flow of images which i hope you will find inspirating and maybe uh, you will have a time to reflect on that i hope i really do hope that thank you so much and i hope that next time we see each other in the real life Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, to M. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Thank you again for the invitation. And now, last but not least, the last guest of tonight, Romeo Franz, both artist and politician, member of the European Parliament, Vice Chair Committee on Culture and Education. Dear Minister Lennart, dear Evelyn, dear Thomas, dear friends, thank you for inviting me to this New Year's reception of our Green family. Last year, with the outbreak of the pandemic, all our spheres in life have been shaken and we had to realize how fragile our systems can be. We all needed time to understand that our public life is put on standby, the status quo that still remains in all member states also in this year 2021. We are confronted with an experience that is very challenging. The most effective measure still is to keep the distance to our families and friends, to social gatherings and to almost any cultural event. Concerts and cinemas, theatres and exhibitions, festivals and live performances. It is difficult to dispense on culture and we all feel this lack. This lack, this almost total breakdown, has a huge economic impact on the cultural and creative sectors and its almost 8 million employees across the European Union. This sector accounts over 4% of the European GDP. The turnover lost last year is estimated about 80%. And still, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Cultural venues were the first that had to close due to the containment measures and they will be the last to reopen. Cultural workers, artists, musicians, performers, actors face private insolvency. Myself. I'm a musician and I know the fears and worries of those people who are living out of their live performances, their music, who work in precarious working structures. Many are self-employed with no regular income and little access to social safety net schemes. These people are desperate. These people need help. They need to be heard. We Greens want to be a voice for the cultural sectors not to leave cultural workers behind. We advocate for them on all political levels, on the local, the national and the European level. We are fighting for an approach that cultural and creative sectors are included in the current and post-pandemic recovery and revitalization policies and programs and urge the member states to earmark at least 2% of these budgets to the cultural and creative sectors. Despite the dramatic situation, the current times are also an opportunity to rethink the future of culture and its importance for the green transition. Therefore, we urge for more investments, as we did for the Erasmus Plus and the Creative Europe programs. Why is the protection of the culture so important for the Greens? Because culture has not only an economic value, Culture has an intrinsic value as an expression of humanity. It strengthens inclusive and resilient societies and it contributes to social cohesion. 
culture is essential in fighting all forms of discrimination and racism. In times where nationalism and racism are rising, we need to tackle these challenges from every angle, from the rule of law, the human rights and the cultural perspective in order to protect our democracies. What happened in the USA can also happen here. We know the tendencies to autocratic systems in certain member states and we have to be vigilant and to act. Wherever democracy is being dismantled, culture is also restricted. Diversity, freedom of arts, expression and academic freedom are put under pressure. And the protection of minorities is not granted either. Books and modern art have already been defamed with racial justifications. Defamation marked only the beginning of one of the darkest chapters of our German and European history. Dear friends, today is the 76th anniversary of the commemoration of the Holocaust victims. An important day for me personally, as six of my uncles and aunts were killed in Auschwitz. This commemoration encouraged us Greens to defend human rights and to stand up for pluralism and for equal rights for all. For all culture of diversity and the protection of minorities against the rise of racism, anti-Semitism and anti-Gypsism. We fight on all political spheres, levels and fronts. And for that, I'm not only grateful to be a part of this political family, but also proud to stand up for the values we all share. Dear members of the Green family, I hope you did enjoy this event. Celebrating in time of the pandemic is not easy, both logistically and emotionally. But I deeply believe that what we experience now uh, is a great opportunity for all of us to rethink our Western lifestyles and to introduce some changes that will make the, the planet Earth a better place to live. Once again, thank you all that made this event possible. Thank you all the donors that donated to the Green Family Fund. Please stay tuned and follow our green activities on our website and on our social media. Stay safe and Happy New Year.